Good morning. Well, it's almost noon and I'm hiking to White Pocket, which is not far away from the parking area. It's in the same general location as the wave hike I did yesterday. This one requires no permit. Open to the public. The access road is rough in places and very sandy, soft sand in places. But the GX had no problem and the trailer had no problem. It went aired down to 22 PSI. The uh, short trail to get to the sandstone slick rock is very soft and sandy. So we'll see how this shakes out. The name comes from the pocket of white sandstone covered formations surrounded by yellow and orange and the potholes that catch rainwater. It's not a long hike. I wander over the area and it's less than two miles. I am here for over three hours filming and photographing. White Pocket, like the wave, is a sandstone formation of ancient sand dunes that moved in the Jurassic period, over 145 million years ago. Compressed and cemented, they became Navajo sandstone. They eventually eroded, first by water and more recently by wind. These formations are otherworldly. The subtle variations in color are striking and come from the minerals present with the sand. The white brain rock is split by a network of shallow cracks that interconnect and delineate the segments. Ragged, turbulent, sometimes convoluted shapes are quite different from the smooth, graceful, flowing lines at the wave.
Like the wave yesterday, White Pocket lies in the Vermilion Cliffs National Monument. These tiny flowers, not much bigger than the sand grains they are growing in, have somehow found a way to flourish and bloom. While I didn't film it, access to the area can be challenging. You should have a high clearance four wheel drive vehicle. All wheel drive is not good enough. The access road off the highway is graded and easily passable in good weather. It becomes very slick and undrivable in wet weather. From there, the recommended road is Pine Tree Road, which has deep, soft sand. Other roads in the area can be worse. Good evening. I am at the edge of the Vermilion Cliffs National Monument and I found a campsite here. Nothing spectacular as far as campsites go, but it's got a great view of the Vermilion Cliffs behind me. And um, I have been here in the National Monument pretty much all day. I left the campsite this morning at State Line and went to White Pocket, which is 
in the National Monument and hiked around there for several hours photographing and filming. And uh, spectacular, not the same as the wave, but uh, unique in its own way. And tomorrow I plan to drive pavement to uh, the area around Mexican Hat where I will set up for a couple of days and uh, hopefully find a good spot to view and photograph the annular solar eclipse that happens on Saturday, October 14th. After leaving White Pocket, I uh, drove uh, back out on the same very sandy dirt road, encountered one vehicle that was stuck, it was a Mercedes-Benz, and uh, they were digging themselves out just as I arrived and had to get off the road with the trailer, but uh, they made it through and past me, thankfully, and continued on, and who knows what happened to them afterward, but almost certainly not aired down because they had very low profile tires. So, uh, made it in and out without any incident. Had a couple people ask me how the trailer did. No problem, aired down to 22 PSI. And uh, both the, the GX and the trailer just floated along, very little effort, even on the very softest sand. The only time I really had to give it anymore was driving through the area that they had just dug up for the Mercedes. So the, the GX and the trailer both do very well in soft sand, at least uh, what I've encountered so far.